Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss the working of a reactance modulator. Now this modulator can be used for generating a frequency modulated output. There are certain devices whose reactance can be varied with respect to the input voltage applied to it. So this principle is being utilized in these modulators. FET, BJT, Barrector Diode. These are some of the devices which can be used in a reactance modulator. Now these devices have the property that their reactance can be varied by the application of voltage. So what we do is that we keep these devices across the tank circuit of an oscillator and the effective frequency of oscillation of the oscillator can be varied. So now this is just the tank circuit of an oscillator. What we do is we connect to this, out, this uh, terminals, we can connect these devices to this terminal and we can alter the frequency of oscillation. So frequency of oscillation is given by 1 by 2 pi root LC. Now suppose we are able to create a capacitive reactance over here corresponding to a capacitance C dash. In that case what we can observe is that the effective capacitance changes to C plus C dash in the circuit circuit and the frequency of oscillation will be varied. So in this way according to the input voltage applied the reactance can be varied and therefore the frequency of oscillation of the circuit can be varied. So this is the way or this is the principle which is used for generating frequency modulated output by re using a reactance modulator. Now this is a circuit of a FET reactance modulator. This is a bias circuit where we have a capacitor and a resistor. Uh, this is a drain current shown by I. IB is the bias current. The voltage between gate and source is shown as VG over here. We apply a voltage V across the terminals A, A dash and Z is the impedance seen across A, A dash. If the impedance Z seen at A, A dash has to be pure reactance. In that case, the components placed in the circuit has to follow certain conditions. So the first condition what it says is that the bias current IB must be negligible. It should be very small, meaning to say that this impedance should be very large. If IB should be small, it means that this impedance of the circuit should be very large. The second condition what it says is that the impedance of the gate and source, this impedance should be the impedance of gate and source should be less compared to the impedance between gate and drain. This gate drain impedance should be large compared to the gate source impedance or this XC in other words XC this capacitive reactant should be very large compared to the resistance over here. So only if these two conditions are satisfied we can say that this impedance Z will be a pure reactance. Now provided that the conditions for R and C are met, we are going to prove here or show here that Z is going to be pure reactance. For that we will see what is the value of gate voltage over here in the circuit. Gate voltage Vg is obtained as IB into the into R because gate voltage is the voltage across this resistor. So base current is the current flowing through the circuit. So IB into R. R into IB is actually the voltage divided by the impedance of the circuit. So voltage here is V divided by the impedance of this circuit over here network is R minus JXC. So we get the value of VG as R into V by R minus JXC. Now the next is we are going to find what is this current, the drain current or drain source current for a FET. So we already have learned the expression for drain current for a FET. The drain source current is given by GM into VG, where GM is a transconductance and VG is the input voltage, the gate source voltage of the FET. So I is equal to GM into VG. Now I is given by GM into VG. So GM into VG is the voltage across the resistor R. So by using the voltage divider rule, you can write as R into the total voltage V divided by R minus JXC. Now the impedance Z seen at the point A A dash between this terminals A A dash is given by voltage divided by the current. V is the external voltage that we are applying and I is the drain current flowing through the FET device. So V divided by I, we have got the expression for I over here. Just doing the substitution, we find that Z is equal to R minus JXC by GMR. Now we are taking 1 by GM as common and we get 1 minus JXC by R. Now we have said initially that there are two conditions that should be satisfied if this Z has to be a pure reactance. So we have considered that XC or the capacitive reactance in the circuit is very much greater than the resistance. So in that case 
if x c is very large compared to r in that case this term becomes minus j x c by r or z is equal to minus j x c by r into g m minus j x c by g m r so it shows that this impedance has now a clearly it's a clearly capacitive reactance that we have at the output provided we have taken those condi conditions or constraints for fixing the values of r and c so we have obtained the equivalent uh, impedance or the impedance seen at a a dash is minus j x c by g m r now here we find that the impedance is a pure reactance so this reactance that we have over here is x just represented by x equivalent so a reactance equivalent reactance is x c by g m into r so now just giving the substitutions for x c we know x c is 1 by 2 pi f c so do the substitution over here and then what we have remaining here is x equivalent is given by 1 by 2 pi f c equivalent provided the c equivalent is g m r c so instead of g m r c i have replaced it by c equivalent and c equivalent here is equal to g m r c so what we are going to try say over here is try to explain over here is that by placing the values of resistors and capacitors as per the conditions, we can obtain an impedance which is a pure capacitive reactance. And the capacitance value actually corresponding to that reactance is obtained by C equal N which is equal to GMRC. Now we can obtain the value of C equal N in another way also. The capacitive reactance Xc can be written as 1 by omega C which is 1 by 2 pi Fc and we know that capacitive reactance has been taken to be n times the resistance that is we have taken the capacitive reactance to be very large compared to the resistance and usually this n is taken to be about 5 to 10 times. So now C can be just doing the substitutions over here C can be obtained from this as 1 by 2 pi Fnr or C equivalent can be written as GMR by C equivalent is GMRC is the expression for C equivalent GMRC. So we're just substituting GMR and instead of C over here, we are substituting the value of this C and then we get the equivalent value of capacitance as GM by 2 pi Fn. So now we have got two expressions for equivalent value of capacitance that we connect to the output or connect across the tank circuit. So what we are trying to show over here is that the expression GMRC or this expression GM by 2 pi Fn that is when we try to apply a voltage, when we apply a voltage to these devices like FET, we find that the in the transconductance value changes and when the transconductance value changes you can find that there is a change you have an equivalent capacitance it is it is actually generating a, cap, a capacitive reactance at the output and that capacitive reactance is responsible for changing the frequency of oscillation of the oscillator now usually resonant modulators they operate on tank circuit of Hartley and Colpitt's oscillator and the commonly used uh, components in the bias network are the resistant capacitor. Now it's only it is not only the capacitive reactance that we can generate across AA dash. You can generate capacitive reactance or inductive reactance because either by changing the value of L or C in the tank circuit you can change the frequency of oscillation. So what we are trying to show in this particular table is that depending on the values of the components that you are placing in the circuit and depending on the components whether you place an RC and the position of the components it will determine whether the reactance at the output is capacitive reactance or inductive reactance. The first one is what we have actually explained right now in the simple basic FET modulator. We have this RC capacitance that is we have placed a capacitor between the gate and drain and a resistance between gate and source. This is the, this is the circuit what we have explained right now. There we find that the capacity we have taken the condition that the capacitive reactance is very much greater than the resistance and we got the value of equivalent capacitance as GMRC. Now in the same circuit if you are just reverse uh, replacing that is instead of the capacitor you place a resistor and instead of the resistor you place a capacitor and you follow the condition that the resistance value is very large compared to xc in that case you find that your z is going to be is going to be inductive reactance and the value of the inductance is given by rc by gm now similarly it is possible to have inductor and resistor you can place inductor and resistor and then get an get an inductive reactance you can also place a resistor and inductor and then get a capacitive reactance so finally what we are trying to summarize what we are trying to say over here is that 
a reactance modulator is capable of generating uh, it is capable of producing a frequency modulated output we know that in frequency modulation the frequency changes frequency of the carrier changes with respect to the instantaneous amplitude of the modulating signal so in a resonance modulator we are applying the modulating signal to the resonance modulator and what is seen is that according to the input voltage that we are applying over here we were applying v voltage so according to the voltage that we are applying we find that the reactance of this particular circuit keeps on changing and this circuit is placed across the tank circuit of an oscillator an oscillator by itself has got a resonant frequency depending on the value of L and C and when you place this particular circuit when we place this res um, um, reactance modulator across the tank circuit we observe that the effective capacitance or effective inductance keeps on changing depending on the values of R C L that you are choosing and accordingly the frequency of oscillation changes thereby we are able to generate a frequency modulated output so that's all for this session thank you